Uh-oh, things are getting really interesting with the Commanders right now as far as the team sale goes, man. I mean, free agency is on the way. We got all of this draft stuff. I'm working on a all coaches hired since Eric Bieniemy got here video that's going to come out later today as well. But right now, it's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we got to talk about how there is now a combined $11.8 billion network team of Mitchell and Rails and Josh Harris teaming up to buy the Commanders. Josh Harris was looking a little ugly for him he seemed like the prime candidate because Dan Snyder has made it very clear and it's been reported that Tanya Snyder is being pettier with Jeff Bezos than even Dan Snyder is and that they apparently don't want to sell to Bezos if his offer is anywhere even relatively close to Josh Harris's offer and of course Jeff Bezos has the most money out of anybody that could potentially buy the team but now with the combination of Mitchell Rails and Josh Harris does that make Jeff Bezos an automatic no for the commanders because josh harris by himself could not buy the commanders but now he found an ally things are getting really interesting also i want to take a look at a potential future sale timeline and then take a look at a lot of the random news that have gone down the past couple of weeks that i haven't had a chance to talk about even though a lot of it is irrelevant now just want to read through all of the top headlines and just laugh at all of the chaos that's been going on with the commanders lately but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday for the call in live show where i open up the phone lines and y'all call in you voice your opinions you ask whatever questions you may have the show is literally for y'all so make sure y'all pull up every sunday for that stay tuned for the film sessions for the draft prospects make sure you stay tuned for the updated targeted prospects for the commanders that i'm gonna come out with every time we get a new slew of confirmed prospects that the commanders have talked to interviewed bringing in for visits all of that type of stuff stay tuned for anything free agency any news like this all of it and without further ado let's get it All right, so we already know a lot of what's going on with Josh Harris and how he's been trying to acquire the team. We're going to talk about him a little later. But for now, the big news that Mitchell Rails, according to Adam Schefter, is partnering up with Josh Harris to make a bid to buy the Commanders. And what's really interesting is that both Josh Harris and Mitchell Rails are both Bethesda guys. Mitchell Rails went to Walt Whitman High School. But the most important part is that Mitchell Rails is worth $5.6 billion dollars and Josh Harris is worth $6.2 billion. So that's $11.8 billion combined. So they have way more than enough money to get the deal done if they really want to it seems like they really want to and again from Dan Snyder's side between him and Tanya Snyder they're doing everything that they can to avoid selling to Jeff Bezos and it looked like really the only chance that Jeff Bezos had in buying the commanders is if he offered a lot more money than any other contender because again he had to basically put Dan Snyder in a situation where like okay I know you really don't want to sell to me but are you going to take billions and billions of less money just because you're that petty towards me but now with this new 11.8 billion dollar team coming together and forming voltron versus jeff bezos this is looking like jeff bezos is done because i'm pretty sure he's not gonna try to outbid 11.8 billion dollars worth of competition of course jeff bezos has way more money than all of these guys combined and i don't know how much this new team of harrison rails that sounds like a law firm too i'm pretty sure that's probably gonna stick if they end up buying the team which looks like it will more than likely happen harrison rails but i don't exactly know how much they're willing to bid because it's not like they're gonna throw all of their money into this because remember first of all you got to keep an extra three bill on the side for the stadium alone but it looks like this firm handshake between these two guys equals up to enough money for them to purchase the team and buy the stadium and again I don't think Jeff Bezos, uh, even as much as he may want the commanders, I don't think he's about to go out there and offer, okay, so they're going to put up $7 billion. How about $8 billion? I don't think it's that serious to him. But if he wanted to, Jeff Bezos could say, forget it, man. Let me just go ahead and throw out $10 billion there and just dare Dan Snyder and Tanya Snyder to say no. But I highly 
highly, highly doubt that happens. So I would definitely say the team of Harrison Rails, the newly created law firm title, are definitely our prime candidates right now. Definitely in the lead, for sure. But let's just go back a little bit to get a good idea of exactly what's going on right now. I'm giving you the headlines, but let's get into some details. Well, Shouts out to Kyle Smith for GM of Hogs Haven for this article. Did a good job of basically bringing everything together. He said, this morning, Adam Schefter is reporting that the local billionaire, Rachel Rails, is teaming up with Josh Harris in an attempt to buy Washington's football team. That's crazy that that actually used to be our name. With an estimated net worth of $5.6 billion, Rails strengthens the Harris bid significantly. Josh Harris, who owns the Philadelphia 76ers of the NBA, New Jersey Devils of the NHL, and a minority owner of Crystal Palace FC, the Premier League, has an estimated worth of $6.2 billion. Harris already had a bid on the team, and the top bid was reportedly $6.3 billion. Tillman is the only other known bidder. And what he means by that is apparently there's like four groups, not including Jeff Bezos. You have Josh Harris, who now has teamed up with Mr. Rails. Then you had Tillman for Titta and then apparently there were two other groups of people or individuals that are placing their own bids on the commanders that also plan on touring the Washington commanders facility so all of these groups are taking this very seriously there's four different powers that be again not including Jeff Bezos because he hasn't even officially placed a bid or toured the facilities or nothing outside of Jeff Bezos there are four individual powers trying to buy the commanders but again the Harris and Rails partnership is definitely in the lead but going back to the article tillman the only other known bidder out of four groups reportedly offered more than 5.5 billion for the franchise so josh harris offered more than that amazon founder jeff bezos hasn't placed a bid on the team but there has been heavy speculation on his interest in becoming an nfl owner and dan snyder has reportedly blocked his efforts to enter the bidding process and view the team's finances golly that's so petty moving on rails co-founded the Danaher corporation in 1983 and is one of 11 billionaires currently in the dc region he grew up in bethesda and is a graduate of walt whitman high school like i said earlier for those in the area he's also the developer and financer of the glenstone museum in potomac i remember y'all got on my head about pronouncing it potomac it looked like potomac bro i'm sorry which is truly a local gym in the region so not only are these two billionaires and not only do they have the most money combined out of any potential buyer for the commanders outside of bezos and they have the most money out of any potential buyer Buyer that isn't hated by Dan Snyder, but they're also two DMV guys. So that's really cool, man. That's a really cool combination right there. And now that we already know the competition with the Tillman guy, Bezos, who hasn't even placed the bid and is being blocked. And then you have two other unknown bidders, groups of bidders, individuals, whatever. Now let's take a look at what a timeline could potentially be. Shouts out to Tan Top Podcast for remembering this because they pointed out that Jerry Richardson announced he'd be selling the Panthers mid-December. He had a purchase agreement in place by mid-May. That took five months. So if you do five months based on when Snyder announced that he might be selling the team, which is the beginning of November, that means that he may have a purchase agreement in by the beginning of April, which is less than a month away. So could that be a potential timeline? Is it a five-month type of thing? And also remember the NFL's owners had a meeting March 6th randomly out of nowhere. This was not a usual thing. This was literally to meet up about the Dan Snyder stuff. This was not a scheduled owners meeting at all. So apparently they're trying to get stuff going, even though they met over the course of two days to discuss Dan Snyder. I mean, again, that was literally the reason for the impromptu meeting. No decisions about a possible removal vote were made yet, but that's probably because they already heard about this Harrison Rails combination, because from what I've heard, the main reason that they would have considered actually doing a vote to get rid of Dan Snyder was to force him to sell the team to like a Jeff Bezos to basically get it to where Snyder doesn't even have control over the commanders anymore and then now they're able to give it to the biggest bidder who again would be Jeff Bezos if Dan Snyder wasn't in the way but now if the Harrison Rails combination is good enough for the owners to be like okay whatever we'll stay out of it we don't necessarily need to vote them out maybe that's what happened and maybe that's why even after two days worth of meetings to specifically talk about dan snyder there was no decision on a vote but directly from the article breaking down what happened in the owners meetings the washington commanders owners dan snyder's future is on the agenda for discussion at upcoming committee meetings in florida ahead of the actual annual nfl meeting in arizona in late march which would be after the start of free agency sadly but free agency is already coming up this upcoming week we're not selling this team before then so us as commanders fans have to already accept that dan snyder will be the owner of this team as we head into free agency but again i mean that shouldn't make too much of a difference anyway because i feel like 
like even if a new owner would have came in, Ron Rivera and all of those guys want to do the best that they can to retain the guys on this team as a priority and then probably bargain bin shop after that. We probably weren't going after any big names anyway, but who knows? It would have been really nice to have a new owner here before free agency started anyway, but that's not going to happen. The person who spoke to the Associated Press on condition of anonymity Tuesday because the person wasn't authorized to release details said voting to oust Snyder if he chooses not to sell the team remains a possibility but again they didn't make a decision on whether or not it will or will not happen but that's just really interesting that that was just a couple of days ago that those owners literally met specifically to discuss Dan Snyder we have an owners meeting coming up in just a couple of weeks and they felt the need to meet up a couple of weeks prior to that just to talk about Dan Snyder that's pretty big and also just to give you a little PTSD a year ago today the commanders reached a deal to trade for Carson Wentz and you see all of these deals going around right now teams trading for players who knows if we get active but just because we were already talking about timelines here's a timeline for you right here today was the day just a year ago that we traded for Carson Wentz hopefully we don't make another decision like that right now and I'm completely focused on this team getting sold as soon as possible definitely if we're not going to be able to do it before free agency can we please do it before the draft please can y'all come together and figure something out and again this combination of Harris and Rails makes it far more likely just in general but also far more likely for it to happen sooner which I hope happens. And then let's just go look at some of the headlines that have happened over the past few weeks since the last time I talked about the ownership things. First of all, Jeff Bezos and Josh Harris are the two finalists about the Washington Commanders and the NFL owners will discuss Dan Snyder after new reports and all of that type of stuff. And there was so much speculation about Dan Snyder may just end up keeping the team, but it's already been confirmed by a lot of reporters close to the situation that Dan Snyder is selling his team and it will be sold sometime in 2023. We do not have to worry about that and thank goodness and then there was the statement from lisa banks and deborah katz on reports of new financial misconduct by the washington commanders apparently he's one billion dollars in debt he spent 55 million on the logo of a side of a jet meanwhile our facilities are terrible and we have the lowest grade as a free agency destination in the entire nfl because of it and then snyder tried to demand that the nfl and owners indemnify him against any future legal liability if he sells the commanders or he will sue which really angered the owners and probably was the catalyst for that meeting that they ended up having a couple of days ago over the course of a couple of days. ESPN came out with an article giving a lot of the details on the investigation for Dan Snyder and all of his financial crimes. Not only have we seen additional damning evidence that Snyder likely engaged in illegal financial dealings and cheated other owners, we are also reminded of the limps Roger Goodell and the NFL have gone to protect them. So on top of all of the workplace conduct and how he treated women and work and all of that type of stuff we have like actually legal stuff that people go to jail for that he's attached to and again he's one billion dollars in debt which i'm not surprised about everybody saying that i'm not going to a commander's game until dan snyder sells the team a lot of that stuff probably added up not buying merch not attending games us having the worst nfl attendance in the nfl things like that man but espn said over the past two and a half years our clients have reported decades of sexual misconduct and the financial improprieties by dan snyder and washington commander in response, the team has called these former employers liars and opportunists, attempted to intimidate them through the use of private investigators, and even tried to shift blame onto them for the organization's toxic culture of harassment and fraud. This week, not only have we seen additional damning evidence that Snyder likely engaged in illegal financial dealings and cheated other owners, but we are also reminded of the unfathomable lengths that Roger Goodell and the NFL have gone to protect them. Indeed, Snyder continues to insist on special treatment and protection from the NFL and his owners by reportedly demanding that the league indemnify him against all liability and also that it bury the results of an ongoing investigation that Commissioner Goodell promised our clients will be made public. Like, I mean, if you ain't got nothing to hide, then why do you care? So he clearly has stuff to hide. As a result of our clients' courage and tenacity, and despite Snyder's efforts to evade accountability, investigations are ongoing by the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Virginia, which is investigating Snyder's financial misconduct, and by Mary Jo White, who is in the final phase of her year long NFL investigation onto allegations of personal sexual misconduct by Snyder and financial improprieties by the team. It's a lot going on, man. So basically, from the Van Netta story, you can conclude that Snyder pretty much has to sell the team. He literally can't even afford to keep the team. So that's pretty much a done deal. Snyder and the team have been struggling financially
especially compared to other teams, cash flow is a major problem and has affected football decisions. So the reason that we've been struggling to do a lot of things that we want to do is because of Snyder's mismanagement of the team and the finances and things like that. It's been a 55 million on the logo of a side of a jet. Also, Snyder's best punch is punching himself in the face turning minority shareholders against him along with Gruden's emails as part of why he's in this position today. So a lot of stuff he tried to do just basically backfired on him. But it's also true he will make a good return on price because remember he only paid $875 million to get the team. So just go ahead and sell it. Stop stressing yourself out. You netted far positive in this situation. Snyder's deteriorating relationship with co-investors, specifically Fred Smith, contributed to loss of team name in July 20th may have happened eventually but smith was done with snyder and went scorched earth on him also the fact that jeff bezos has been shut out from the bidding by dan snyder it's reported that that actually could speed up the process because a lot of other buyers wondered if they even have a chance so all of these other buyers including the harrison rails combination were probably like well if bezos even has a chance to buy this team why should we even put this much effort into doing it especially trying to do it as soon as possible but now with jeff bezos apparently being blocked out that provides hope for all of the other groups that are trying to buy the team so that's really interesting but then there's a report that jeff bezos apparently was not blocked from the bidding and nfl owners are worried about dan snyder we already know that snyder is going to sell the team for multiple reasons it's already been confirmed and again tillman fertitta the billionaire owner of the nba's houston rockets and landry's hospitality and entertainment is one of the groups that entered into the sweepstakes and that was reported back in like february 25th also after selling his co-ownership stake in the bucks in the nba nfl sources say that billionaire hedge fund manager mark lasry of avenue capital is said weighing putting together an investment group to buy the commanders we don't know what happened to that maybe he's one of those unknown groups that's interested we don't know and then of course it was reported that jay-z may still be a part of jeff bezos bid if he ends up doing it but again dan snyder's not playing with him so jay-z more than likely will not have anything to do with the commanders and of course that whole survey that came out again we were dead last in a lot of important stuff we had a d plus in nutrition c plus in weight room d in training staff f in treatment of facilities f minus in training room f minus in team travel and a really bad grade in how we treat players families and things like that and again the vast majority of that if not all of it is dan snyder's fault spending 55 million on the logo of a side of a jet instead of making sure we have enough training staff making sure we have enough hot tubs and cold tubs and all of that type of stuff team facilities training room, all of that type of stuff instead of spending money on that for us not to be at the very least dead last in that 55 million for the logo on the side of a jet now of course it's been a lot of reports that it's going to be really difficult for anybody to get a stadium in rfk like a lot of fans want and really our only hope for that would be jeff bezos but again seems very very unlikely that jeff bezos will end up buying this team and again jeff bezos if you want to have the most money involved and you want to get the best stadium possible the best team facilities and all of that he's your best bet but again that's just not gonna happen but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything and as always man i appreciate all of the support man shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now let me know how you feel about this harrison rails combination do you think that name will stick first of all and do you believe that they actually will end up buying the team and if they do do you feel like it could happen before the draft and man i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out oh.